All right, so... <laughs> Am I an INTP? Who knows? Let us see. And... Uh, you know what really quacks me up? Ducks. Okay, so we're gonna figure out the next one that I'm going to try to test as, and it's going to be <laughs> an INTP. If I don't get this next one, we gonna have problems, son. <laughs> You guys are going to get to know me personally a little bit better, and I'm just gonna answer them for myself. And we'll see where it goes. Hopefully it runs up, because I've had lots of people criticize what my personality type is. I think it's kind of funny. I got ENFP, INFJ, INFP, ENTP. There's a lot. And then some that are like, no, he really is an INTP. So we'll see. Introverted thinking, extroverted intuition, introverted sensing and lastly extroverted feeling <laughs> so here we go you regularly make new friends i'm gonna say no and i'm gonna see how extreme i can make these um you spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest yep um seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry and this is interesting i have developed i used to not um but it has gotten to a point where I would be more inclined to something got tapped um, with some hurts and being able to empathize more strongly has been able to allow me to feel the need, like feel like crying especially if they're close to me but in a general sense i'm gonna have to say no that is tough because there, there is a tap of humanity now that has been kind of explored that hasn't been there before um, but it's not a natural space for me. I think it's when I am far more struggling in something, my extroverted feeling is up in the forefront, and then I'm all of a sudden much more inclined to do so, and then when I'm actually better and more healed, I'm less likely to be empathetic in that way, or at least sympathetic. I don't know what that would be, but you often make a backup plan for a backup plan, sometimes, but not very often. Um, you kind of roll with the punches, you know what I'm saying? Um, you usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, at social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself. Most actor ones you know. Yup. Um, you prefer to completely finish one project before starting another. <laughs> um, you prefer to... Well, excuse me. I would prefer to, but do I? No. <laughs> you prefer to... Uh, dang it. I'm going to have to say disagree because like it, the prefer is not strong enough to actually carry out that desire. You're very sentimental. Yep. Very strong intro introverted sensing. Um, you like to use organizational tools like schedules and lists. Nope. Um, even as actually sometimes I do like, especially if there is a huge, so there's like some shoots that I would be on, um, video shoots where you really do have to schedule and all that stuff. And it's great to have those, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not really bound to that stuff. Um, even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and your knowledge. Yes. Um, it's, it's a lot better than it used to be. I just be like, wow, I'm a complete moron, but, um, you know what? Maybe not so strong. I'm better at it now. Um, you feel comfortable just waking up or walking up to someone you find interesting and striking a conversation. <laughs> I have my moments very rarely, but for the most part, no. Um, you're not too interested in discussing various interpretations, analysis of creative work. I am not. No, I am. I think it's a fun discourse. Um, you are more inclined to follow your head than your heart kind of a weird like of course i guess my my rationale i plan things well not plan things but like there's a logical sequence of things the heart what is it <laughs> i'm following my heart well, i guess if i were to yeah i'm just thinking about when you're in love it's not that that's driving you forward or like when you're very much intrigued in the in someone in the opposite gender, it's more of like all of a sudden of this big puzzle. So you're inclined to follow your head? Yes, I probably 
<laughs> that was probably even me <laughs> showing it because I overcomplicated it. You usually prefer just doing what you feel like at any given moment instead of planning a particular daily route. Or routine. Yep. You rarely worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. That's... Sometimes I don't care, sometimes I do care. You rarely worry about, worry about, rarely. Yeah, maybe compared to people who really do worry about it, I maybe don't as much. Um, you enjoy participating in group activities. I enjoy hanging out with friends. Hey, there's my moth friend. <laughs> um, uh, you enjoy participating in group activities. No, not so much. Um, but I do enjoy it when I'm like in it and it's a really well motivating game or um, evening. You like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretational endings. You know what? I don't. I'm not so inclined to that because I, well, dang it. I guess it depends. Now I'm just already going up back on my end, like, or back on my word. So it's like, if it's constructed well and there is thought about like the key heart of the story, the motivation of the characters. And then, yeah, you don't really know if they get back together or does he actually die or whatever. Like if I could say Shutter Island, for instance, like what really happens? I actually kind of do like the open-ended interpretation of it. And then you're using the whole adventure of the uh, story. I guess what I'm trying to think of is there's some stupid ones out there where it's like they're trying to be artsy, leaving an open interpretation, but really you just kind of sloppily left it on open, like, on, like open ended and it's just bad. <laughs> like, from an objective point of view. So you like movies and I, let's just say yes. Um, happiness comes more from helping others accomplish things than your own accomplishments. No, but I do enjoy helping other people climb to, like, to accomplish things and really supporting them. I do enjoy that. There's just kind of like victory amongst us all. But happiness, I think I, I enjoy accomplishing. I don't know. Just thinking about different times where I do sacrifice my own accomplishments for other people's accomplishments, or like I feel accomplished when other people accomplish something. So in the end, it's still my accomplishment of some kind. Hmm. Your happiness comes more from helping others. I'm gonna disagree, accomplish things. Not necessarily because I don't like helping others, but I think I am a little bit more self-motivated. Um, but to people that I care about, and even some general people, I do like to help them out. And, but I think I'm more interested in my own endeavors. Um, you are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next. <laughs> um, you are prone to worrying that things will turn out for the worst. Yeah, I do. Especially when you experience some of the worst, you're just waiting for it to happen again. You avoid leadership roles in group settings. I do, but that doesn't mean I haven't taken that responsibility from time to time. You are definitely not an artistic type of person. I disagree. Like, especially the definitely. I'm artsy in my own way. You think the world... I make sure you are definitely not. I disagree. Okay. Some of these. Okay. You think the world would be a better place. People relied more on rationality and less on their feelings. I think this is kind of, I don't like the wording of it. It's cliche. If I can say it that way, because like I'm in an environment where people keep saying you can't rely on your feelings. Feelings are bad. And I'm slowly getting to understand more and more what they mean by that. 
Because like if you have an inclination to something, it's good to trust it and to work it out to figure out where that's coming from. And if your inclination was wrong, to figure out why. Um, but yeah, once you get a feeling about someone or about a situation, you can't always depend on that initial feeling and you need to dive in a little bit more and find out that you have some past traumas that is taking over your conscience. So I'm going to have to say, I suppose, yes. Um, do you prefer your, your chores before? <laughs> do you prefer your chores? Oh, goodness gracious, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. I disagree. <laughs> um, lines up over your ex. You enjoy watching people argue. I do. Actually, we have people screaming here all the time, and it's very interesting. Um, <laughs> but also, I like debates and stuff. Um, you tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. That's tough, because sometimes I do enjoy being in the spotlight. I mean, heck, even doing these videos, I'm drawing attention to myself through this. Tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. You tend to avoid. But in the grand scheme of things, I do. I am kind of more in the background. And unless I'm either doing music I lead praise from time to time or like in a church um, or if I'm being silly with people, but for the most part, yeah, I tend to avoid drawing attention to myself. I think so. Yeah. Your mood can change very quickly. Oh, this is tough. Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, for the most part, I think, you know, when I think about it from the general's point of view, no. People that are very, very, very close to me can make my mood change very quickly. I try to be very consistent, but they can pop my, or poke my bubble and, or at least get under my skin, I should say, and just make me feel suddenly really insecure or something like that. But for the most part, your mood can change very quickly. I disagree. Um, well, let me put it here because I can um you lose patience with people who are not as efficient <clears throat> efficient no so, lose patience no i might some from time to time i'm kind of like come on man or something but it's not like no uh you often end up doing things at the last possible moment Yep, and I try not to, but it still happens. You have always been fascinated by the question of what, if anything, happens after death. Well, of course. <laughs> All right, you usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own. You usually, no, I rather be around people like a core, like people I really love, one or two people. That would be my preference preference you become bored or lose interest when the discussion gets highly theoretical i've oddly become more so because i have started to see how the theoretical influence of conversation is can be so detached from the reality of life and people think that they're one and the same so i've growing up for so long in in an environment that is very theoretical i very much enjoyed it and it's become no i still get really theoretical but i would be inclined to want to engage in the practical sense of the world why we do things as humans um my dad's an intj very theoretical guy mathematician um and I really enjoyed a lot of those conversations, but as I grew older, I started to enjoy more conversations with my mom, which she's an INFP. And she is so much more about the humanity aspect of like um, the principles of, not even just principles of life, but just curious about, um, I don't know if you call it inner workings of a person, but when you think of a story, um, like 
unveiling innocence. What does it mean to explore innocence or ch like change from innocence to um, like lack or losing innocence? And it's just, there's all these little interconnected things. And I find that very intriguing, but it's, I suppose it's still theoretical. I know this is taking a long time. <laughs> um, the discussion gets asked, ah, so no, I'm, but like, because I think I still incorporate it in a theoretical sense. Um, and even me talking that much about that probably means because I'm <laughs> theorizing or making it very theoretical. <laughs> you find it easy to empathize with a person whose experiences are very different from yours. I'm trying so hard to work on this, honestly. And just kind of realizing that people come from such grand different just great such grand different um experiences that truly shift them as a person and they act weird because of the struggles that they are in and you just have to find a way to be empathetic and i'm trying but do i find it easy no you usually postpone finalizing decisions for as long as possible. Yep. <laughs> you rarely second guess the choices. Nope, I second guess them all the time. Um, after a long and exhausting week, a lively social event is just what you need. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. The uh, You enjoy going to an art museum. I don't mind. I would be like, woohoo, art museum. But I, I go with someone that I am close to. Um, you often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. This is another one where I think I have grown a lot in. But when only kind of conceptualizing for my own headspace, understanding I have a hard time. I think I, yeah, I think it's more natural that I have a hard time, but I, I really try to work to understand where people are coming from. But you like to have a to-do list for each day. Wonk. All right. You rarely fail insecure. Nope. Um, you avoid making phone calls. I've started liking making phone calls because it actually is quicker. Like even trying to send a text or like, you know, you need at least three or four back and forths. And if you just call, you can have the back and forths way quicker <laughs> than trying to text them. But I do mostly avoid making phone calls. So, um, well, cause that's just something I've become more comfortable in my skin, so to speak. And just making a phone call. Uh, maybe that's, partly it because i i worked at a mortgage company for a little while before i was laid off and um they i i was on the phone all the time so maybe that kind of helped work through that a little bit you often spend a lot of time trying to understand views that are very different from your own i do um in your social circle you are often the one who contacts your friends and initi initiates activities um yeah from time to time. Yeah, but I'm also around people who doesn't don't initiate things very often. <laughs> and there's certain people that would really like to hang out. And they initiate the first hangout. And we kind of realize, oh, this is awkward. We're not as compatible as a friendship. <laughs> and it's just, I don't hear back from them again. I'm not mean. It's just up here coming out here and it's just weird um i'm gonna s or wait you're often the one who contacts your friends so i'm gonna say no but i friends is a very like do we mean very very close friends of course i do i love in, in, engaging with them but i'm also not like hey every other day let's go do something it's kind of difficult i live in a house including me, 10 guys live in this house. So I guess there's always something going on. And so I, I don't have like the context anymore of like when I'm away, like maybe living by myself or just one person. So I, let's go a little further out. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track as soon as possible. I disagree. 
Um, you are still bothered by mistakes you make alone. Yes, I do. Um, you rarely contemplate the reasons for you. Rarely? Nope. Um, your emotions control you more than you control them. No. Um, you take great care not to make people look bad, even when it is completely their fault. This is tough. I think I would be more inclined to say the truth, even if someone else is on the other end of that. Um, which is something I like when you realize there is a sense of dignity, I've been more inclined to try to protect people and realizing like, Oh, we can't just say the, the honesty of this, um, or at least find a way to stick up for them when they don't, when they're not there to stick up for themselves. But I would be more naturally inclined to share the truth and um, whoever's on the other end, even if it's me, um, is just the transparency there. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than organizing. Yep. Um, <laughs> this is just a great example. Uh, when someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it's going to take before they feel disappointed in you. Yes. Very much so it's a lot of pressure i have a fear of success which is also the fear of failure <laughs> and i try to work through that but um you would love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time i think so yeah when there's too many personalities in the room engaging all at once and i can't have the opportunity especially if they are extroverted types I am not inclined to be loud and stand up for myself as much unless I really have some clarity about what I'm wanting to achieve or communicate about. But I do love working with a team, especially like in a like a movie set or something like that. I've done that before, um, or even working with one person. You would love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time. I think I. That's just tough because I've been doing substitute teaching and it's really fun with the kids. Um, kindergarten, first and second grade so far. Um, those are the kids I got to work with. I'm going to be here. I'll be more inclined. I need, I would think I would enjoy time by myself or at least I am like if you're a teacher, even though you're engaging with a whole bunch of students, now you have the faculty, but you're still in your classroom. Um, and I think I would appreciate that. You believe that pondering abstract is a waste of time? Disagree. Even though, like, I was just talking about that earlier. But uh, you feel more drawn to places with busy, bustling atmosphere. No. You know at first glance how someone is feeling. Sometimes. There are certain people that just have it louder than others. And I don't know if that means I actually have a sense of empathy or they're just people that are very loud with their emotions. <laughs> and it's like, oh, that's obviously you are upset. <laughs> um, first glance. No, probably not. It takes me a little bit to realize there's something up. Um, you often feel, unless they're people I'm close to, then I can like, it It can be as soon as they walk in or sit down or like, oh, there's something going on there. Um, you often feel overwhelmed. That depends. Because, like, my... I like to chill, but it's because of being kind of overwhelmed by certain things and you're more inclined to relax. Often feel overwhelmed. I'm going to say, yeah... But also no, because I'm so chill. <laughs> maybe over, maybe daunted. I'm like the task ahead of me is daunting, but overwhelmed. You know, you often feel. I'm gonna say no. I often feel overwhelmed. I'm gonna say no. You complete things methodically without skipping over any steps. Now, um. Unless you, I absolutely have to, but um, you are very intrigued by things labels controversial. Yep. <laughs> uh, you would pass along a good 
opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. I've done it. Um, I have done it, but I think they have to be people I truly care about, that they're personal to me. I don't think I would be inclined to do that with just kind of anyone. Unless there's kind of a piece in me that I see that they really do need it more than I do. But I also would... If... It depends on motivations. Is like, if I needed the opportunity, I think I've been interpreting this wrong. Now I think about it with the other ones. So let's say like there's a job, and I would say I have wife and kids, and I'm looking at this other person, and it's like I I need this opportunity, and I'm not gonna just pass it up. I think I'll be more inclined just naturally. It doesn't mean that it's so interesting because I think there's a natural sense and then there is your virtue. Like now that you're observing the situation, do you go against what's natural to you um, for a sense of your virtues or do you kind of go continue on what's normal? Would you pass along? Good opportunity. I think I would not. That's my initial inclination. You struggle with deadlines. Um, not entirely like I make sure that de it help happens to the deadline. Now, how I get there, I may be dead when I get there, but <laughs> because I'm not structuring myself out as well as I should or ought, you struggle with deadlines. Um, I kind of have to say no, because like, because I, I, I will get there. Doesn't mean I may struggle trying to get there, but I I don't struggle like I keep I don't keep asking for deadlines being pushed back. If that makes sense, you struggle with deadlines. No, I'm gonna be on this side. You feel confident that things will work out for you. That's another, so like, it depends on which direction that I perceive this. I feel confident that things will work out for me. Yes. But I feel confident. I keep saying it and hoping that <laughs> like it can sink in a little bit better. Things will work out, yeah. I think I am more inclined to think that way. More inclined. All right, so. <laughs> am I an INTP? Who knows? Let us see. And uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> so if that means anything, well, hopefully it means something. And that can rest the conversation if you would like to uh, stop calling me all these other ones. But I think it's kind of funny. But anyway, <laughs> I was actually kind of nervous about that. It's like, it's like, what would happen if it doesn't happen to be that? I don't know. I'm just answering honestly. All right, so I will see you guys in another video, another life, never know. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I just changed demeanor really quickly. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Goodbye. See you later now. Bye. Uh, stop recording.